Step two, torque by sequence to 22 foot pounds. Pins the turbo motor and full time four wheel drive dual. Alright, we need a 12 pointed 12 pointed socket. Wait, is that for the heads? Yeah. We don't even have so to. So we're not it. even taking the valve cover we off. We don't have to. No, we don't take shit off of this head. We ain't gotta take shit off this head. We can even put that cam pulley back on if we wanted to. If we didn't want to lose it. Wow, that's pretty But we gotta do our seals yet. If we fix our seals now, we can put the cam pulley on there. Alright, we are gonna remove the heads from our EJ22 engine. As you can see, we have our engine on a stand sideways. This gives us better control of our tool. What's required is a 14 millimeter, 12 sided socket that fits on these bolts for no chance of slip. What's nice about this engine is the head comes off in one complete unit. Uh, we do not have to remove the valve cover for anything. This minimizes any contamination in the head. We already have rags inside of the intake ports. The spark plugs are still present and the valve covers are still present. So this thing moves right into a box face down on a paper towel and it'll be ready for us when we go to put it back together. So I'm gonna unthread these in a pattern from outside to in to release the torque from the piece. Uh, as it's bolted down, it sort of stretches out and is flattened out. If you tighten it up, you tighten it from the middle and work your way out so it kind of lays down and squeegees out, so to speak. So we want it to relax in that same manner too. So we're gonna unbolt the outsides first towards the inside in a radial pattern crisscross, much like the lug nuts on your car in a star pattern. fluids there. It's opening up an air pocket. Can't Move wait to hear that. I can't wait to hear the compression sound. That'll be sweet when we get that. Keep it here for it. In the middle. Smell that oil? Smells crispy. Hear it? <laughs> I already just go. What are you stuck on? Oh, the oil tube. Let me get that off of there. Really? Oh yeah, look at that, it is. All right, when you're removing this head, be sure to take off the oil tube. All right, now we're in business. It ain't nothing now. All right, here it goes. There it is. Subaru heads. It's 
put this aside. There's our pair of Subaru heads in there. Got a lot of carbon in there. Oh, look how shiny that one is. See this one? See how it's shiny? See the piston shiny? Yeah. The other ones are all black and shit. Look at that. See how that's shiny on the edges? This one may have had a, a failing head gasket. Uh, what happens is water gets burned in there and then it starts melting all the carbon away. We now have our block stripped down. We have our deck and our heads clean. Here's a good close up of our head. What we've done is just taken a razor blade to scrape off any of the leftover graphite from our old gasket and any carbon deposits between the holes and everything. Uh, you can see the original milling marks from the factory. Um, some people like to have these heads turned down. I've always gotten away with not having to turn them as long as you clean them good. Uh, you could machine the heads down, but you can only go so far before your intake manifold becomes too wide if the, if the heads become too narrow. So this is ready to put on our engine. We have new gaskets. We have the hybrid gasket since we're using a 2.5 block. The whole reason for tearing this engine down was because we had a bad rod knock, but also for the demonstration purposes of doing head gaskets and an EJ22 build. <coughs> so what the procedure we're watching are assuming an EJ22 tear down and rebuild, but at the same time we're supplementing the 22 block with the 2.5 block and essentially building a hybrid Franken motor as we go for the demonstration purposes of a 2.2 top end rebuild. Need to get a good shot of my tea bag on here. Yeah, we got a good tea bag. See my tea bag. Oh yeah, see that? Make sure our deck is clean. I mean, just a simple razor blade does the trick. Nice and smooth. Uh, according to the uh, Tutorials on the various Subaru message boards. The Cometic brand gasket is the one to use. It's worth a little bit of money. As you can see, this is a multi-layer steel gasket, MLS as, you, as it's called. We have one stamping in the middle, and the outside stampings have these raised portions that are going to squish down into our engine. Now with all Subaru engines, you're going to install your gasket dry. These gaskets are uh, symmetrical, so they will fit on either side of the block, so they're not left and right specific. And even the heads will fit on either side of the block, but you'll know your head's on backwards if your cam is facing out the back instead of the front. But, you know, symmetrical Siamese design, can't go wrong. So we have our gasket there. Now we're gonna take our shiny little head here. All right, so I'm gonna stick our head on here, put it on the right way. Uh, the heads are specific to which side Ooh, of the engine oil is. oil drinking. Where? Over on the right. right. Yeah, right there. All right, well, I got it on there. That'll be fine. So there it sits. Uh, what we want to do is we want to lubricate our bolts with some engine oil. We're going to reuse the bolts that are original to this head. All the hardware we're using are original to this head. We're basically going all EJ22E hardware on this EJ25 block. Same head, same cam sensor, same intake, exhausts. The only thing that's going to be specific to the 2.5 block is the uh, the oil pan and maybe some shit to do with the, uh, the oil pump. Alright, these are our head bolts. They're this long. Uh, we're going to reuse them because you never have to re-change re them or replace them. They're not as stretchable as torque to yield, although the torque patterns are similar to that. But what we are is we're threading into an aluminum block with a finer thread to get all of our torque. Um, what we want to do is make sure our threads are clean get any carbon and funk off of them and we want to oil them. The best way to clean these are, is a wire wheel on a, on a bench grinder or even a wire wheel on the tip of a drill or even just a wire brush, a brass, brass brush if I can speak straight. Get all the funk out the threads and we're going to oil it. The idea of oiling the threads is so we get our torque readings properly because if dry threads, uh, if the bolt has any resistance going into its bore, it's going to falsify the torque. So we want to make sure it's going to smooth down torque up and get a proper reading with our torque meter. Consider we have like a somewhat complicated torque pattern. It's ridiculous, but you'll get to see that in a second. So I'm gonna get these bolts ready and then we'll be ready to uh, bolt this thing down. Uh.